Fur Traders Descending the Missouri was painted by George Caleb Bingham in 1845. It is currently on view at the Met and is located just outside the room where Washington crossing the Delaware hangs prominently on display. Unlike that massive painting, George Caleb displays a slice of life that is much more calm, tranquil, and humble in its appearance. Its size is also much smaller compared to Washington crossing the Delaware. However, because there is less oil on canvas doesn't mean that there is less to be said about the artwork. As the title describes, we're taken to the Missouri River on what seems to be an early morning. There is a slight gradient stretching across the sky going from pink to blue and clouds disrupting its transition from left to right. Interestingly, Caleb dedicated almost three-fourths of his canvas to the chunk of sky. It simplifies the overall painting as a whole and helps convey the feeling of stillness that most viewers feel when looking at the artwork. The remaining one-fourth of the painting is dedicated to but a few key elements, trees, the river, and our subjects. Interestingly enough, this artwork's original name is different from what we know it today. In 1845, Caleb named the finished piece French Trader, Half-Breed Son, touching upon the concept of race and the common nature of marriages between fur traders and Native American women. However, the managers of the American Art Union in New York, where Caleb submitted the artwork for exhibition, retitled the artwork, believing the original one may have been too controversial at the time. Subsequently, by changing the name to what it is today, the union removed the commentary that the artist was prioritized with discussing. Instead, we are left with two characters that have been transformed into generalized Western types. In this discussion about race, where does the bear cub fit in and how does the painting's composition add further commentary from the artist? By examining the figure's horizontal positions within the canoe and in relationship to each other, one could examine the artwork in a way that describes how savage each one is. To the far left, we have a wild, undomesticated animal chained to the end of a boat. Nothing could be more savage as this, which is why it is used as the visual definition of the term. In between, we have the son of the fur trader and Native American woman. By being placed in the center, Caleb insinuates that he is not as modern or human, as horrible as that sounds, as the trader, but not quite as savage as the bear either. Essentially, he is creating social commentary about the children of these mixed marriages, saying that they aren't just a mix of French fur traders and Native American women, women, but also a half-breed between savagery and modern man. It is most likely because of this controversial nature that the title was changed, and understandably so. However, it does provide insight into how people, and even artists, used to think back then. Finally, to the far right, we have the French fur trader smoking his pipe, symbolizing regular, rustic, modern man. For viewers today, it is quite strange to look at this piece that has so much social commentary coming from the artist being set in a world as still and tranquil as that of this painting. Perhaps that shows just how normal Caleb's way of thinking was for the time, despite our immediate backlash to such assumptions about people. Or perhaps Caleb never intended to create that kind of discussion at all, and simply imagined a world that shows what the rustic -like life must have been like for fur traders at the time. Either way, because such conversation and thought was provoked, I consider fur traders descending the Missouri by George Caleb Bingham to be a great piece of American artwork.